now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 20th. Day 294 in 2020 sees another tropical storm form in the Atlantic in the form of Epsilon. We also have Tropical Storm 19W by our analysis, approaching Luzon with winds of 45 miles per hour. It's day 294 of the year so far, and 86 storms have formed so far this year, with the two of them being in the last 24 hours. So here is where Tropical Storm Epsilon is located. It is located, located southeast of Bermuda currently, and it is currently stationary, would you believe it? And it is forecast to move towards the northwest and intensify on approach to Bermuda, and could be a, a hurricane threat to the island. However, some models are saying that the storm could veer off towards the east and out to sea. And we also do have a 10% area of interest in the Western Caribbean Sea. In the East Pacific, no storms are active. However, there is a little interesting feature that could lead to some potential of tropical cyclone genesis later down the line. We'll have to watch and see on that. Tropical Storm 19W is approaching Luzon in the Western Pacific with winds of 45 miles per hour. It has a small chance to intensify up to 50 miles per hour on our forecast before it makes landfall in Luzon. However, most of its intensification will happen in the South China Sea, where it will likely peak as a typhoon. It could be a Category 2 intensity typhoon at peak, but it will likely weaken as it approaches Vietnam. In the North Indian Ocean, to absolutely everyone's amazement, nothing is active here, as there was just a tropical storm in the Arabian Sea, however, that has since dissipated. So here is Tropical Storm Epsilon right now as it continues to stall southeast of Bermuda. It had an attempt at a convective burst earlier today, however that has since leveled off by the looks of it. And it does look to be intensifying quite substantially. It formed a tropical depression around 8am Eastern Daylight Time and it is now a 45 mile per hour tropical storm. Epsilon does have quite the interesting trail leading off towards the northeast of it. It looks to be quite the front pushing up towards the Azores. And then there's that 10% area of interest near the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean Sea, which is creating isolated showers and thunderstorms over Cuba and Florida. The Gulf of Mexico as a whole, however, remains quite interesting. It remains quite dry, quite bare, I should say, of thunderstorm activity. Um, thunderstorms trying to blare off across the Texas coastline by the looks of it, however. Nothing too major is on the horizon here, luckily. In the East Pacific, you can see that little interesting feature towards the south of the tip of the Baja California Peninsula that could potentially become a tropical cyclone later down the line in an immediate frame. It does not look to be becoming a tropical cyclone. You can see a little interesting feature, extropical system in nature, to the north of Hawaii. That probably won't lead to anything either, so the East Pacific remains quite inactive by the looks of it. In the Western Pacific, Tropical Storm 19W is approaching Luzon with winds of 50 miles, 45 miles per hour, I should say. <laughs> It'll probably intensify up to 50 before it makes landfall, and then a typhoon peak is probably on the way. You also do have Invest 97W with a medium chance of formation according to Joint Typhoon Warning Center. We're not marking it down because the wind shear is forecast to be very high for the system under 19W's outflow, so it probably will not form. Sea surface temperatures for the Atlantic at least are very above average, they are still very warm despite being in late October, and we could be seeing a major Caribbean sea storm soon, believe it or not. Even after Delta, sea surface temperatures only dropped about 1-2 to two degrees Celsius at best, so sea surface temperatures are still very favorable. Across the West Pacific and the Indian Ocean, they also do remain favorable, however the East Pacific not so much. On this day in 2010, Typhoon Meggy reached its secondary peak as a Category 4 after striking Luzon with winds of 185 miles per hour. One of the strongest storms to make landfall in Luzon, believe it or not. Tropical Depression 16W also formed on this day and would become Category 4 Typhoon Chaba. 4B would also explosively intensify to near Category 5 intensity in, in around 48 hours from now and make landfall in Myanmar as a Category 4 by the name of Jiri. 19L also formed and would become Richard in the Atlantic. So these are the names on the naming list. If we do get another name in the Atlantic, it would indeed tie 2005 for the name storm record. It would be Zeta followed by Ita. 
in the East Pacific, if we do ever get a name storm this season, it would be Odalis followed by Pola. In the Central Pacific, we are still waiting on that dreaded name, Hone. Looking into the Western Pacific, Saudel could be right on the line of being named. Could be named in the next few hours, to be quite frank. Followed by Malave and Goni, back from 2015. We'll see if it gets up to that intensity, like a 2015 counterpart. In the North Indian Ocean, Gatti is next, followed by Navarre. In the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, Imogen is next up on the naming list, followed by Joshua. In the South Indian Ocean, Alicia is next on the naming list there, followed by Bongoyo. July Club season in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the Australian region, and the South Pacific begins next month with the next name in the South Pacific being Yolanda. We'll have another Chocolate Boiler Bowl t tomorrow night, so stay tuned for the latest information on the, the system around the wild world of tropics. Thank you.